Good morning and good afternoon and welcome to this webinar. It's being organized by the International Policy Center for Inclusive Growth in Brasilia and also the UNICEF Middle East and North Africa Regional Office, as well as being hosted online by socialprotection.org. My name is Sarah Haig and I'm your moderator and host for the next hour and a half. And we're going to be looking at this question of legal frameworks in relation to social protection and how they can or cannot relate to children and be more child specific within the Middle East and North Africa region in particular. We're going to start now. We have a very uh, impressive panel for you this afternoon. We have about 30 people, 35 people uh, around the region and beyond tuned in online. So we're going to start looking at the panelists and the lineup that we have for you this afternoon. I'm going to put my camera off. I know it's very nice to see me, but I'm going to put the camera off so that we can have a slightly better connection uh, as we go through the webinar. So why, uh, let's start with looking at the, the panelists first. I will introduce each of them. We have two presenters from the International Policy Center this afternoon. The first you see on your screen, the slide for Anna Carolina Machado. She's a researcher at IPC. She's been there for a few years now, working on research projects across Brazil and Sub-Saharan Africa, as well as the Middle East. She previously worked with UN Habitat in Latin America, particularly on development projects in the city of Rio de Janeiro. And you can see that she has an academic background in public policy and international relations. We'll go now to our second panelist who will be presenting with Anna Carolina. Her name is Charlotte Bilo. She is also a researcher at IPC in Brasilia. And she has also worked for the Center for Social Protection at IDS in the UK, as well as having worked previously with the German Development Corporation, GIZ, in Brazil, and the Ministry for National Planning and Economic Policy in Costa Rica. Both Anna Carolina and Charlotte have been working on a new study in partnership with UNICEF in relation to this issue of the legal frameworks which surround social protection in the MENA region. So they'll be sharing with us some of the results and conclusions from their study. We'll then immediately go on to a presentation from Mr. Jamal Abdul Rasul Khareb. He is the Director General of the Information Technology Center of the Iraqi Social Welfare Authority. In his position, he is responsible for the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs database. This database is currently providing social welfare to 1.2 million vulnerable families across Iraq. And prior to this, he worked for a couple of years as the director of Iraq's Emergency Social Safety Net Program, which was financed by the World Bank. And he's also held a range of other important positions in the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs, which he joined in the late 80s and he regularly provides technical support to the Iraqi Social Protection Commission. So as one of the pioneers of Iraq's emergency social safety net, he was actively involved in the drafting of the country's social protection law from 2014. So we'll be hearing from him on that. Mr. Jamal will be presenting in Arabic, and he will be accompanied by a UNICEF colleague, Khulut, who will be also providing a translation for those of us who require it. For me, as I've said, my name is Sarah Haig. I'm your moderator. I am the Chief of Social Policy in UNICEF in Lebanon. I previously worked at the World Bank and Save the Children, and I have an interest in this particular area, so I think that's why I was asked to chair. So, without further delay, we're going to move into the main part of this webinar. So to share with you the structure, as has been uh, shared with you by email previously, we will have the first presentation delivered by IPC, by Anna Carolina and by Charlotte. They have about 20 minutes or so for their presentation. And then we will go straight into the presentation that Mr. Jamal is making. We'll have no more than 30 minutes for that presentation. And then at the end, we will have, of course, a discussion and a Q&A session. So throughout the webinar, as you are listening, I want participants to actively engage. So please be sharing your questions, sharing your comments through the chat bar on the right-hand side that you see on your screen or wherever it is on your screen. 
please type your questions in there. Kindly put them in English. If you can mention the country that you're from, and if you're targeting your question or your comment at a specific panel member, then mention that. Then I will try my very best to try and field all of those comments and questions and share them with the panel members and we'll have a discussion. So we should not need more than, I think, an hour and a half for this webinar. We'll see how we go on time. And now I'd like to hand straight over to Anna Carolina and Charlotte. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for the introduction. Thank you, everyone um, who's joining us in front of their computers. Um, my name is Charlotte. I'm with my colleague, Anna Carolina. And as Sarah already mentioned, we will be presenting today the findings of a recent study that we conducted in partnership with uh, UNICEF's regional office for the MENA region. So first, I'd like to um, give you some background information on the study and on the topic uh, itself. So this uh, study, uh, which will be available next week, um, the study is the outcome of a partnership, as I already mentioned, between the IPC and UNICEF Minado. And it's the second of a series of four knowledge products uh, that we've been working on since 2017. And the first study was launched earlier this year, an inventory of all non-contributory social protection programs in the MENA region. You can also find that study online. And um, the other two remaining ones will be um, published until the end of this year. Uh, so, coming to the topic itself, first of all, a bit of background on uh, social protection in the MENA region. Um, as uh, many of you probably know, the MENA region, social protection in the MENA region, um, has uh, for a long time relied uh, uh, to a large extent on subsidies, food, fuel, or utility subsidies, which, as an increasing body of research um, has shown, tend to be rather regressive, meaning that they benefit the rich more than the poor. Uh, from our first study, the inventory that we conducted, we also saw that many of the um, programs, of the social protection programs in the region, target households uh, without able-bodied male or without yeah, people who, who can work. Um, so this includes widows, uh, people with disabilities, the elderly or orphans. Um, however, in, in recent years, we've seen um, a number of reforms in the region uh, to remove or reduce these subsidies. And so, for example, in Egypt or in Iran. And um, in, in some countries, the, the revenues from these removals are used to at least partially finance more targeted cash transfer programs. So in, in light of this, um, well, new landscape of social social protection, social provisioning, and the 2011 uprisings and, and the well, consequences from that that sometimes uh, included the introduction of new constitutions, um, we've been asking ourselves to what extent can we see a shift towards a more rights-based approach to social protection in the MENA region. And there we also already come to uh, yeah, our conceptual framework of our study. Uh, namely, a rights-based approach to social protection. A rights-based approach to social protection is based on, on the idea that uh, social protection is not only a matter of policy, but one of rights, as it's also enshrined in several international human rights instruments, uh, including the Convention on the Rights of the Child and many others. Uh, why is it important uh, to embed social protection programs in a legal framework? Uh, well, first of all, because uh, through a legal framework, they um, create an entitlement to which citizens have access. Um, but secondly, which is also important, is that social protection programs that are embedded in a, in a comprehensive legal framework um, can be more sustainable as they're less prone to changes in the government or changes in government's uh, priorities. So this is... Um, really important. Uh, however, it's, it's important to mention here, of course, that the, the sheer existence of a legal framework is not necessarily a guarantee for the implementation. Um, 
we in our study did not look in this particular study did not look at the, the actual implementation of these legal frameworks rather uh, we looked at the legal frameworks themselves but of course and especially in light of the ongoing conflict in the MENA region um, in many countries it's uh, this is of course an, an important factor to keep in mind that the legal frameworks are um, then unfortunately often not implemented as such in reality um, so this brings me to the rationale and the objectives of our study. Um, embedding legal frameworks uh, into, sorry, embedding social protection programs into legal frameworks is particularly relevant for children as they are not only uh, more at risk of malnutrition and disease and therefore in need of social protection, but also because they are more dependent on others uh, for support. So for children it's really important that their right to social protection is uh, anchored in uh, legislation. So against this background, uh, our study had two main objectives, and we will follow these two main objectives today in our presentations. One, uh, to provide an overview of the existing legal frameworks uh, that uh, promote children's right to social protection in the MENA region. And then in, a second, uh, in the second part, we will look at um, a selection of 22 social protection programs in more detail and their legal frameworks and we will see to what extent the legal frameworks comply uh, with the human rights based approach to social protection and a set of criteria that I will just present in a second. Uh, before we uh, start however it's um, important to, to remember that the focus is here on non-contributory social protection programs and um, it's also uh, good to know that with legal frameworks we refer to all national laws and other decrees or secondary legislation and regulations. This means that we also included social protection programs that are, for example, um, regulated by an executive decree or presidential decree. Next slide, please. So now the uh, criteria which we use to benchmark the selection of, um, of programs against which my colleague Anna Carolina will present um, in the second half of the presentation and she will provide some, some examples for each of uh, those criteria. So the first one is that legal frameworks should clearly um, establish the eligibility criteria of the social protection programs, meaning the conditions that someone needs to fulfill in order to be eligible uh, for a given program. Secondly, the roles and responsibilities of all those involved in the implementation of the program um, should be stipulated. And thirdly, the financial requirements and resources of the program should be laid down in the legal framework. Uh, then we also looked to what extent the legal frameworks already foresee a complaint or appeal mechanism that allows citizens uh, to complain, for example, in case they were wrongly excluded or they want to um, report any, report any uh, mismanagement in the program. And lastly, um, another important criteria is whether um, there are any uh, participation channels already foreseen in the legal framework uh, through which uh, citizens can inform the design, implementation or evaluation of the programs. And this brings me now already to the findings. I will start with, yeah, we have this slide there, okay, great. Um, I will start with an overview of the international and regional um, treaties that are relevant for the MENA region and um, all of those uh, do establish the right to social protection except for two and if my colleague could click once more thank you then you should see the Banjo Charter and the African Charter on the rights of the welfare of the child they do not establish explicitly the, the right to social protection the others uh, do and we can see the first five ones are part of the uh, well the core set of international human rights treaties we have the Convention on the Rights of the Child the Covenant on, on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, and uh, CEDA, amongst others. Um, we see from this table here that the international human rights treaties have more signatories in the, in the region than the regional ones. And in our study, we provide a bit more information on each of those and how they relate to social protection. Next slide, please. Uh, now, in this um, table, we, we looked at all the constitutions of the 20 countries in the MENA region and um, we tried to see to what extent they uh, entail 
an article related to the provision of social protection or social security, which is used interchangeably in this particular study, um, or uh, articles related to the provision of an adequate standard of living. So, for example, in terms of housing, um, access to water, food, uh, yeah. And then uh, in, the, in the red bar, in the um, right uh, column, we uh, looked at whether those provisions are um, explicitly extended to children. So whether the right to social protection for children is explicitly mentioned in, in the constitutions. And we can see that actually uh, this is rarely the case. There are only a few countries that explicitly extend the right to social protection to children. And here it's um, important to mention also that this is often um, related to orphans. So many of this that you can see in the right column, um, they stipulate the right to social security for orphans. Also, um, in general, it's uh, an, an important uh, differentiation in terms of wording can be observed, in, in the not only in the region, across the world, actually. Um, meaning that some countries, uh, such as Iran, for example, they stipulate the right to social protection as an ind individual right. So in the, in the Iranian constitution, for example, it reads everyone is entitled to the enjoyment of social security. In other countries, however, uh, it's more formulated as, a, as an objective or a, a guideline. So in Morocco, for example, it's rather formulated as the state, public institutions and local authorities should work to mobilize all means available to facilitate equal access uh, to social protection. So we can see um, yeah, some differentiation here in terms of wording. Uh, in general, uh, the, the Egyptian constitution is maybe an interesting case to, to highlight because um, it um, has a whole set of articles related to, to social protection. But there are other constitutions in the region, such as Lebanon or Djibouti, where we did not find any explicit mention to social protection. OK, um, now uh, we also, um, in addition to the international treaties and constitutions, we also looked at uh, national strategies or national development plans, knowing that, of course, they're not, not legally binding, they're not legal instruments, but they're, uh, they're ne nevertheless important to look at because they can help to enhance the uh, coordination among different stakeholders and the um, institutional legitimacy of a program. And it is, although it's generally advised to have a, a specific strategy on social protection to um, enhance the um, national social protection systems, we found that only a few countries in the region actually have an explicit social protection strategy. Most countries in the region make mention to social protection in their development plans or poverty reduction plans. But here too, very few explicitly mention the right to social protection for children. Um, if you or noteworthy examples are Djibouti, Morocco, and Jordan. And um, yeah, next slide, please. Thank you. So um, before I hand over to my colleague, um, another set of legal instruments that we looked at are national child rights, uh, child rights acts. So documents with a comprehensive list of children's rights, and. Um, most countries in the region do have such an instrument, um, 14 out of 20. And it's interesting, as you can see in the, in the timeline, that uh, many of them were introduced after 2010. Um, however, here too, again, only seven make an explicit mention to social protection. So most of the time, those child rights acts are concerned with, um, well, other, other areas of children's rights, such as um, protection against abuse and violence, um, right to health, right to education. But social protection, we found um, yeah, less often to be the case. Uh, an, ex an exception is maybe the Egyptian Child Rights Act, which was amended in 2008, and envisaged the introduction of a cash transfer uh, for orphans and vulnerable children. And here it's of course interesting to see that in 2015, that's a Kafu and Karama program was introduced. Um, so now I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Anna Carolina, yeah, who will continue the presentation. Okay. So good morning, good afternoon, for everybody uh, attending this webinar. Thank you for your time. Uh, so I am Anna Carolina. I will continue presenting our findings, studying this together. So looking at more specifically into program legislation this time, uh, 
uh, and base it on the overview of non-contributory social protection programs that my colleague presented at the first uh, review by IPC in partnership with UNICEF, Regional Office for the Middle East and of Africa, we found more than 150 programs uh, in the region uh, among cash transfers, conditional and unconditional, school feeding programs, cash forward. So this includes a wide uh, range of variety of programs. From, for those, uh, we found 88, so more than half, that are actually anchored in some sort of uh, night legislation. So as also Charlotte has introduced, or either a national law or a, regu a, regu a regulation by uh, ministry or a presidential decree so yeah that's uh, a really important finding uh, we also found that unconditional cash transfers are uh, the most common and uh, yeah, the most frequent type of program that we found in the region and also the most frequent one for which uh, we found uh, uh, related legislation so more than two-thirds of unconditional cash transfers are covered by some sort of regulation and uh, for other types of programs, this varies quite a lot. So we see that very regular, very frequently subsidies, uh, we could not map, we could not find uh, any, any regulation. And uh, yeah, the same for, for school feeding programs and also conditional cash transfers. And uh, this will be more clear on the next slide. Uh, so uh, this graph uh, brings a uh, good introduction to the number of programs and the, for which legislation is available introduced uh, a long time uh, since the 50s and um, then uh, yeah we, we have gendered for the 70s and uh, into the days of today we can see that the number of programs introduced by laws they increase uh, especially since the 80s and you also see on this orange bar this is these are the unconditional cash transfers. Uh, we see also, uh, yeah, from the 80s, especially through the 90s and the, the years 20s, uh, a big number of new programs being introduced by law. And also important to note that although we see uh, a big increase on the 2000s, is that uh, very uh, uh, from those programs mapped, you see that there were actually 27. Uh, we could see a uh, quite a uh, concentration in some countries. So it's not uh, that the process was widespread along all countries in the region, actually, we analyzed 20 countries. Uh, for example, 10 of those programs were introduced in Algeria only from the 2000s to 2009. And uh, just to mention uh, some few examples here of programs that we were, variety of programs were introduced. We have the Egyptian Social Center Pension in the 80s. On the 90s, we have the Social Welfare Fund, Yemen, also covered by law. And uh, in 2010, the Iraq <clears throat> Targeted Subsidy Reform Act that introduced a uh, cash transfer that covered, uh, yeah, covers almost all the population and also reflected this, this uh, change from a more universal subsidy oriented system to social protection towards a more targeted system with target programs. So, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, on this graph, we can see uh, on the green bars the number of programs we match per country, and on the red line, the number of laws for each program, for each related program in the country. So, it's, good, it's a good way to, to see which are the gap, where are the gaps in terms of, of uh, social protection regulation. See some, some countries such as Algeria, as I mentioned, with a quite good number of social protection programs covered by laws, in contrast with Djibouti or Morocco or even the state of Palestine, in which a very, uh, very small proportion of programs are actually anchored in a, in a law. So, thank you. Uh, going for some of the regulatory gaps and making it more clear, uh, we saw that. Very important programs that we have that have met important programs for families of children, especially, are not yet embedded in a national legal framework. Some examples include Tassir in Morocco, we also have PINAF and PPS in Tunisia, or the ENPTP in Lebanon, and the National Cash Transfer Program in Palestine. And why is it important to note uh, is that 
basically not necessarily our programs actually start in credit national legislation. That's the case, for example, for the Iraq uh, cash transfer program, national cash transfer program that will be introduced in the second part by Mr. Jamal, uh, although it was introduced in 2005, uh, a national legislation covering, a main national legislation covering the program just happened to be introduced in 2014. So we don't see it as a negative aspect, it's just a good point to draw attention. And yes, as we uh, also illustrated, we see that most commonly cash transfers and health protection programs, they tend to be more uh, frequently embedded in the national legal framework, while school feeding programs in kind transfers are less often covered. So can we move to the next one? Um, another point that's important to, to note here, just to complement my point, is that we found uh, on these gaps uh, some groups that are, and particularly vulnerable groups, that are very uh, frequently not covered by a national law on social protection or they are not entitled to the right to social protection. This is the, particularly the case for children on the move. So including refugees and also children from economic migrant families, for example. And we do recognize that it's a wider challenge and it's not just for the legal, on the legal frameworks uh, area, but we could see some good examples. Uh, we highlight here the digital statutes for refugees uh, introduced in 2017, for example, and that innovates by extending the right to social protection for refugees in the country. So uh, this goes through uh, the second part of our, our analysis, which was selecting some social protection programs, 22, uh, at least one for each country, each of the 20 countries in the region, except for Palestine, in which we found that the main cash, cash transfer program in place in the country, the MC, uh, PNCPP, uh, still don't have a legal framework. This legal framework, as, as far as we know, is still in the process of deliberation. So, uh, on our um, study that will be available quite soon, we also have uh, this uh, analysis uh, very well uh, organized in a systematic way in front of tables. So, you can also see for each article of each law, we have found the criteria that my colleague introduced at the beginning, uh, linking them to the human rights. Uh, Linking link into a human rights based approach and the five main areas that we have found relevant. Uh, so, I would like to introduce to you some of the final examples in terms of, the, of those programs we have analyzed and uh, by the criteria. So, you go by one by one. Starting for the setting out eligibility requirements, we saw that our legal frameworks reviewed, they actually stipulate uh, which are the groups eligible for the benefits and the benefits, right, but although the benefit criteria is not always very well specified. And this is particularly important because risks uh, most very often problems transparency and transparency and accountability. So uh, this varies quite very often from program to program. And if you had to highlight some examples, we see that the National Cash Transfer in Djibouti uh, had uh, the program, National Program of Family Solidarity, for example, uh, which is uh, which for which the criteria is a proxy means test. Um, the, this is actually specified by the law. Uh, in some other cases, we just have the groups eligible, so for families, for example, children with disabilities, people with disabilities. Uh, but in fact, uh, the fact that we don't have a, a specification on the law doesn't really mean that there are no mechanisms in place. Uh, very often they're just not specified in the law. So for the second question, for the second point, defining roles and responsibilities, yeah, we also saw that, the, that this is a quite good uh, and well covered point in terms of legislations. And also like in legal frameworks, they actually define the roles and the responsibilities of their agencies involved in some level. Uh, however, again, the level of detail of those aspects, they vary greatly across programs. And a positive example to mention is the Social Welfare Fund in Yemen, although the program has been disrupted as it was uh, in, the, in as, uh, its original form uh, due to the conflict. Uh, we see a, 
very good detailed specification of the board of directors established and the responsibilities are set quite clearly for each actor involved in the implementation of the law. Going through the third aspect, the long-term financial requirements, we also see um, the relevance of it to investment. Uh, okay. uh, and um, although we also recognize that uh, the, the so the simply uh, prediction of funding is not enough for enough, not always enough to guarantee that that this funding will be actually directed to the program. We see that, and it's also a matter, very often a matter of policy choice. We see that it's also a, a very important aspect to guarantee the program funds, uh, especially if the, when there is a political change coming or uh, yeah, some sort of. Uh, of, of <clears throat> governmental change in, in, the, in the country. So, uh, 13 programs uh, that were analyzed, so more than half of programs analyzed, specified some sort of funding in the legal frameworks. Going through the four aspects on the appeals and complaints mechanisms, we saw that only half of programs analyzed, they have any mention to an appeal or grievance process. Um, so appeals are very important. They allow uh, citizens to appeal against exclusion decisions, for example, or also to report operational problems in the program. And uh, uh, as you saw, it's quite uh, it's still uh, not very widespread among legislations that we have in the region. Uh, we saw also that it's quite common to have additional that the laws can predict additional regulations on this aspect. So, for example, in Bahrain, in Djibouti, also in Egypt, the Social Solidarity Pension, and in Yemen, uh, the law predicts that this will be established by an additional uh, yeah, decree. And the positive example in the sense is Saudi Arabia's supplementary support program and unconditional cash transfer in place uh, that has one of the most detailed legal frameworks on this matter. And finally, changes for citizens' participation, that's the fifth aspect. We found that it's a, it's, it's a very deficient area on legislations in general. Only three programs have some types of predictions for citizen participation or uh, representation for the society. This includes the disability card in Lebanon and also the Allocation Speciale de Scolarité in Algeria. And uh, just to mention a few examples. examples. So, uh, going moving through the conclusions and also the recommendations on this matter, we see that, yeah, uh, although most programs, they do uh, define some sort of eligibility criteria, they define the eligibility criteria and also the responsibilities of uh, actors involved, uh, it, still, yeah, it varies across program legislations, uh, in general, very few, they stipulate the long-term financial requirements and also the compliance mechanisms. As we just mentioned, the participation of beneficiaries is also uh, readily mentioned. Uh, we saw also that very important programs, uh, especially regarding children's protections uh, in the region, we have, for example, Egypt's, uh, Egypt's Takafo and Karama, and also uh, health insurance programs such as the one in uh, the IMG in Tunisia, Morocco's Hamad, uh, they just comply with two or three of the criteria. And so most of the programs they don't comply with most of the criteria. And uh, some examples of uh, comprehensive legal frameworks they have mapped, we can cite the, the Iraq Social Protection Network that will be better explored in the following part of, the, of, this, of this webinar. And also the digital tools for the national family act introduced in 2015. So uh, finally, before moving to the recommendations, special to remember, special to remember that the fact that the program has an extensive legal framework does really mean that the implementation of the program is uh, is uh, is exactly as predicted by the law. Uh, we recognize this, uh, that there are implementation gaps, and especially in case of conflicts. Uh, we saw, for example, in the case of Yemen and Syria, we have analyzed the legal framework, but we do recognize that the program, the, the programs that as they were implemented in their original state, they were disrupted. So this is the case for the National Social Welfare Fund and the National <coughs> Social Aid Fund in Yemen and Syria, respectively. 
So moving through our recommendations, so we see the need that uh, child and social protection to be uh, promoted as a right. That's why anchoring programs in national legal frameworks <clears throat> and also in macro policy documents uh, such as social protection strategies is a very relevant step for granting this right, not just a matter of charity or leaving it as a policy choice, but actually making it uh, a, a right extended to everyone. We also see the importance that such protection should be uh, inclusive, non-discriminatory, uh, paying particularly attention to the most vulnerable and disadvantaged groups. This includes children with disabilities, this includes children on the move. And we see that countries and international organizations should work together on this matter to address uh, yeah, the specific needs of these groups and guarantee that our are so we see that a uh, big room for progress in enhancing existing legal frameworks uh, and also especially to, so that, that, that they can comply with the human rights based approach. Some of the most important programs, as I just mentioned, uh, are still do not comply with all the, all the aspects highlighted. And we understand that as a process, as a, and as a gradual and incremental process as well. And finally, we see the relevance of this analysis uh, to highlight which are uh, the main gaps in terms of regulation, also the good practice, and to draw attention to the fact that yeah, uh, more well-established legal frameworks <clears throat> and compliance mechanisms, especially in this matter because it's a very efficient part of, the, of, of laws in general in the region, are very important to enhance programs and also the right to social protection for children. So thank you. I will hand over to, to the next presentation. Thank you very much, Charlotte and Anna Carolina. That was a very thorough overview of the legal frameworks in this region. We're going to move straight on to our second presentation being made by Mr. Jamal with the translation. But just as a reminder to all of the participants, uh, please submit your questions or your comments in the chat panel as we go along before we conclude so that we can have a good dis discussion. Thank you. And now over to Mr. Jamal in Iraq. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Shukran ala al musharak ya al ihtimam bi hadhi al musharak li al taalum aw li al tabadul al khibra bain al بين مكتبكم أو مكتب رسمي للسياسات وأيضا مؤسسة الحماية الاجتماعية. السلام عليكم. Thank you very much for this opportunity and for this as I mentioned opportunity to learn about the new subjects and interventions and also the efforts done by the IPC and social policy section in UNICEF. Thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. نبدأ بالحديث عن القانون الحماية الاجتماعية في العراق. في الشريحة الأولى. وضحت لماذا تم تشريع قانون رقم 11 لعام 2014. So I will be start talking about law number 11 for 2014 and this is the social protection law for Iraq. If we can go to the next slide please. الحماية الاجتماعية أو خلينا نقول موضوع الإعانات في العراق لحد لحد تشريع القانون كان يعمل بموجب قانون 126 لعام 1980 آسف مو 81 80 
اللي كان يعتمد المعيار الفئوي. So until 2003, Iraq was taking into or was practicing law number 126 for 1980. Sorry for the the year is mentioned on the slide is 81, but it's for 1980. And Iraq was. Um, uh, giving assistance uh, to the uh, prevention of poverty according to this law, and this was a categorical law. Mm-hmm. خاصة وأنه العراق كان فترة التسعينات هناك حصار معزول عن العالم بعد 2003 اطلعنا على تجارب دول من خلال الشراكة مع البنك الدولي وحسينا أنه ضروري نشرع قانون يعتمد معيار خط الفقر so after the war in 2003, especially that Iraq during the 1990s was uh, was uh, having uh, economical uh, economic sanctions uh, during the 90s, um, Iraq witnessed after the war in 2003 uh, uh, learning new learnings about successful international experiences in the field of social safety nets, and also the partnership with the World Bank has shown uh, an opportunity and uh, also has shown an urgent need to uh, legislate a new law uh, based on uh, scientific concepts. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, sorry, I forgot to mention that also so Mr. Jamal yeah. uh, okay. mentioned that the new law after uh, 2000 uh, three uh, was having the eligibility uh, uh, transferring the eligibility from uh, category categorical standards into the uh, depending on the poverty line uh, eligibility. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This slide is uh, presenting the stages of the social protection development uh, in Iraq, as you can see. كان الشمول يعتمد على الفئات وعدد المشمولين عمل عدد محدود. So the first okay. stage, the first stage from 1980 uh, till 2004, and I mentioned this, uh, it's not 81, it's uh, 1980. Since 2004, the law was depending on uh, the inclusion was based on uh, selecting specific categories and the number of beneficiaries uh, uh, was very limited and it was limited uh, to 58,000 uh, in all over Iraq. Yeah. Uh, 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 فالشمول أصبح تقريبا بدأ يزداد أو بدأ بالفعل في زيادة مضطردة لغاية 2007 بدأ التعاون الدولي أو بدأت الشراكة مع البنك الدولي اللي أصبحت إن أو صار لنا فرصة للاطلاع على تجارب الجيدة والمثلى uh, from 2005, the second stage or the next stage was from 2005 to 2007, where uh, um, there were new inclusions of adding new categories because the lost remained categorical, but new additions were added uh, uh, to the inclusions. Uh, that is why the inclusion uh, during these years has increased rapidly. Mm -hmm. uh, from 2007 uh, till the present, uh, the partnership with the World Bank was established, and this allowed uh, the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs to be 
be exposed to um, so many models and exchanges of uh, experiences uh, with social safety nets in uh, all uh, of the uh, in all of all all over the world yeah. globally. في عام 2013 بعد أن حققنا زيارات لتجارب بعض الدول مثل تركيا وجورجيا ولبنان واندونيسيا البرازيل أيضا لاحقا بدأ التفكير بخلال هذه الفترة بإعداد مسودة قانون جديد يعتمد معايير الفقر وبالفعل تم إصدار القانون في عام 2014. Uh, so in 2013 uh, the ministry uh, was exposed to a study tours and they were exposed to, inter to successful international experiences and new learnings like from Turkey, Georgia, Lebanon, Indonesia and Brazil. And this allowed uh, the ministry to put uh, new uh, criteria or standards for poverty and uh, allowed them to enact a new law uh, that includes new concepts based on the new moderns they have learned from other countries on uh, effective social safety nets. And this was done in 2014. <laughs> لغاية تقريبا 2010 أو 2012 تم يعني الانتهاء منها بشكل كامل بحيث رجعت إلى يعني كانت مدعومة من قبل أعلى جهة في البلد هذه التجربة شهدت ما يقارب من عشر تعديلات في القانون so I just want to mention also the experience we learned from Turkey. It started in 2002 and ended in 2010 or 2012. I'm not sure about that, but uh, the support was from mainly from uh, uh, the higher party uh, or uh, the higher side of the government, and it has witnessed uh, this experience has witnessed ten reforms uh, to the law under the prime minister's supervision. ومع الأخذ بنظر الاعتبار بلد تركيا فترة مثل ما تم الإشارة في العرض مالكم يشهد حالة صراع مستمرة يعني عدم الاستقرار الأمني وكل التفاصيل اللي تعرفوها هذا العمل ليس بالسهل أنه إحنا نطبق أو بدينا بتطبيق قانون الجديد في مطلع عام 2015 uh, so uh, mentioning the Turkish uh, experience, uh, although Turkey has not uh, uh, was not going through conflict or any security uh, instability, uh, but uh, they have uh, implemented this uh, successful uh, experience. We consider it uh, and. And if we compare it to Iraq, where uh, conflict has occurred, as you have mentioned in your uh, in the in the in the first presentation, and also there is security. Uh, the security of Iraq was also not stable during the uh, previous year. Uh, so uh, the law was enacted in 2015. Yeah. Uh, يعني خلينا نقول أزمة نوعا ما أزمة مالية بسبب خفاض أسعار النفط. And also as you know Iraq has witnessed a drop in oil prices and this this has led to serious issues after that. ولكن احنا يعني بدأنا بالتنفيذ وفق خط الفقر من خلال التعاون مع وزارة التخطيط كونها الجهة المعنية بتحديد خط الفقر. والعمل بنظام 
بنظام البروكسي مينز تيستينج اللي هو نحدد به من هو من هي الاسر المستفيده من الحمايه الاجتماعيه. So we collaborated with uh, we worked very closely with the Ministry of Planning uh, on using the proxy means testing and this is one method to identify the eligible uh, beneficiaries according to the poverty line defined and uh, established by the Ministry of Planning. وهنا احب اذكر شيء له علاقه بالطفوله انه الاستماره اوزان او الاوزان التي تعتمد في الاستمارة أو تحدد الأسئلة في الاستمارة وأوزانها لها الثقل الأكبر على عدد الأطفال وأعمارهم. So I would like to mention one aspect related to childhood in the PMT form in the proxy means testing form. that uh, uh, a lot of weight is being given on uh, the questions that determine the inclusion of uh, children within the family. وفعلاً uh, وصلنا حالياً إلى uh, uh, وصل الشمول لحد الآن إلى مليون ومئتين ألف أسرة. Therefore, the inclusion has reached one million two hundred households. يحصلون على الدفعات النقدية. and they all receiving unconditional cash transfers. من خلال من خلال وجود عدد كبير من الأطفال. including في هذه الأسر of children among these households. بالفعل تم شرح هذه أو تم تحديد أو تم تشخيص كل هذه الأمور. في لقاء مع مسؤولي اليونيسيف وعلى اثرها تم البدء او تم التعاون مع اليونيسيف من خلال العام او بين عام 2017 و 2018. Uh, and on that basis, um, uh, the cooperation started between Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs and uh, UNICEF uh, uh, between 2016-2017 uh, to okay. establish uh, a new uh, program that targets uh, cash transfers to children. علماً إنه لدينا أيضاً خارطة طريق مع البنك الدولي للفترة من 15 إلى 19. Uh, we also have a roadmap uh, uh, with the World Bank uh, since 2015 throughout to uh, 2019, 2015 to 2019. Okay. ومثل ما تلاحظون في هذه الشريحة الفئات العمرية للمشمولين كما ذكرت ما يقارب 60% من المشمولين هم يقعون ضمن اهتمام اليونسيف. As you can see from the slide in front of you that 60% of the beneficiaries included in the social protection program in Iraq are children and those are the category or the age group that are of concern to UNICEF. نعم. ولهذا بدا الاهتمام او او التطلع لتنفيذ المحور الثاني والمهم من القانون هو اللي تقديم خدمات او تقديم اعانه نقديه مشروطه الى هذه الاسر. And from the, from this basis or from this need uh, uh, the establishment of the new component uh, from the law uh, was established uh, which is uh, providing conditional cash transfer to uh, those households in need or to the children within those households. ولكون المشروع كبير ومهم تم تم الاعداد الى تنفيذ هذا هذا البرنامج اولا كونه اول مره يدخل بالعراق وتم الاعداد الى من خلال التفكير في تنفيذه في بيئه تجريبيه قبل ان ينفذ على مستوى البلد. Next slide, please. So from, from this basis, uh, uh, 
the new law uh, yeah. was indicating the that conditional cash assistance should be provided to individuals and families who are included in the provisions of this law to ensure their accessibility to show uh, to social services in education, health, and housing in other fields. And from uh, this article number eight, uh, second in the social protection law, the need uh, came to uh, implement the conditional cash transfer in a, in the pilot area in Sadr to in Baghdad. Yeah. The UNICEF تمكننا من تحديد المنطقة وتحديد العينة وهناك دليل تشغيلي لهذه التجربة بدأ العمل به خلال عام الفين عام الدراسي الفين وسبعتاعش إلى ثمنتاعش so through the technical support from the World Bank, also we managed to identify the pilot, the pilot area that we target. Also, we managed to identify the sample uh, that we want to target uh, in this program. And also there is an operational manual that guides us through uh, the whole program and uh, works as a roadmap for uh, the conditional cash transfer. And this was since and the implementation started in 2017. الموضوع يضمن إعطاء مبالغ إضافية للأولاد المست... الذين يستمرون في الدراسة وأيضا إعطاء مبالغ إضافية للأطفال الذين يلتزمون بالإجراءات الصحية والترقيحات والفحص الدوري للحوامل the program, uh, the conditional cash uh, transfer, uh, includes uh, or uh, is eligible is uh, provided to those households who have children, who's, who whom they send to uh, school uh, at the school age uh, on a regular basis. Also, those who comply with the health procedures uh, identified by Ministry of Health on a regular basis as well. So, Im immunization for children and also pregnant women who uh, goes to the health centers on a regular basis. وكما يعلم الجميع أن هذا البرنامج يؤدي إلى الاستثمار في رأس المال البشري وأيضا الحد والتقليل من توارث الفقر. So as you all know that this is or this program will enable uh, the country to invest in the human capital and reduce the replication of poverty. الهدف الأساس هو التأكيد على ضمان نجاح التنفيذ هذا البرنامج على مستوى العراق هو الالتزام الالتزام والاهتمام الأمثل بالبيئة التجريبية. Uh, the uh, success criteria for this program, uh, we uh, believe that uh, commitment and uh, um, uh, good management for uh, the program within the pilot area. لهذا كان هناك خطوات طويلة في إعداد الدليل التشغيلي من من خلال التعاون مع البنك الدولي. Uh, therefore, there were uh, detailed work stages uh, we went through until we reached the final stage of uh, this program. Uh, the first one of them was the preparation of the operational manual in close cooperation with the World Bank. معهم لمحافظات معينة لتقييم الوضع قبل التفكير بتوسيع البرنامج. Also we entered into partnership, uh, successful partnership with the UNICEF uh, and also making joint field visits to uh, other governorates preparing uh, for the uh, scale up of the program. والخطوة الأهم اللي uh, أيضا تم الآن uh, العمل بها هو إنشاء نظام معلوماتي أيضا بدعم من اليونيسيف لغرض الـ يعني الـ السيطرة على كل التغييرات أو على الإجراءات 
التي يتم العمل بها بهذا البرنامج من حيث التعامل التربوي. Also, uh, the next phase was establishing a web-based system for the conditional cash transfer uh, with support from UNICEF as well, uh, trying to uh, control all aspects uh, of the program implementation uh, in uh, close uh, collaboration with education facilities and health facilities to uh, be able to implement effectively. وفعلا يعني تم الاتفاق على ان يكون البرنامج التجريبي يعمل لمده سنتين لغرض اعطاء الفرصه الكافيه للرصد والتقييم. And the pilot program is designed to work for two years so that we manage to monitor the program and evaluate it afterwards. أنا شخصياً كوني يعني مسؤول أو رئيس هذا البرنامج لدي مؤشرات أولية بوجود يعني استجابة عالية من الأسر التي دخلت ضمن البرنامج. From my personal experience, I have witnessed strong strong acceptance and also strong participation from beneficiaries in this pilot program and uh, I anticipate uh, uh, that this program will be successful in the future and in the scale up as well. هذه الاستجابة تشجعنا على البدء بتوسعة البرنامج على مستوى المحافظات الأخرى. The response from beneficiaries and uh, the, their participation is will encourage us to scale uh, the pilot into other governorates. لهذا نحن نستعد ل نحن نستعد لإجراء مسح لكل المحافظات بالتوازي مع هذا التنفيذ التجريبي نستعد لإجراء مسح لكل الأقضية قبل ومن ثم تقييمها قبل إعداء أو قبل الشروع بعملية التوسيع. So uh, in parallel with the piloting uh, the program in the pilot area, we are also planning to uh, make a survey in all the districts and the governorates and evaluate the needs uh, in parallel with uh, the implementation of the pilot before scaling up the program to all over Iraq. Okay. لهذا يمكن هذا هذا السلايد الان بارقام تخص كل الاجراءات اللي تم العمل على اختيار الاسر ضمن البرنامج التجريبي والاهم من هذا هناك دراسه لكل خطوه دراسه لكل خطوه نعملها بالبرنامج بمساعدة اليونيسيف والبنك الدولي. This slide is showing the different achievements we have achieved during this program, and including the selection of the households, and also it can show the the comprehensive study for every step we have implemented in this. ولعل الأهمية الكبرى كانت للنظام المعلوماتي اللي من خلاله يتم يتم تنفيذ كل الخطوات المتفق عليها. And the most important component of the program is the information system or the web-based system, which which includes the implementation of all the steps agreed upon. ولهذا بدأ البرنامج ويانا من لحظة زيارة الباحثين للأسر للأسر من أجل اختيار العين. Therefore, the program started with us since the first moment of the visit of the social workers to identify the sample to be targeted. وصولا إلى المدارس المختارة اللي عددها 49 مدرسة. Until the selection of the schools, which are 49 targeted in the program. And the eight health centers. All of them are under the control of the government. All of them are under the control of the government. All of them are under the control of the government. All of them are under the control of the government. All of them are under the control of the government. All of them are under the control of the government. All of them are under the control of the government. All of them are under the control of the government. All of them are under the control of the government. All of 
يعني خلينا نقول تعمل بشكل مؤتمت في النظام يعني النظام يدير هذه العملية. This system or this web-based system is controlling all the procedures um, uh, with the health and the education facilities uh, from Ministry of Labor. مع وجود عدد من الباحثين اللي مشار لهم 43 حاليا يحصلون سيحصلون خلال الايام القادمه على دورات متخصصه في اداره الحاله. Also uh, with the support of 43 social workers who will be uh, receiving training on case management. ايضا البرنامج سيكون يعني مؤهلا او 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 خلينا نقول الاوتبوت مالت البرنامج نتوقع سوف يصل الى امكانيه اخراج الاسره من الدعم النقدي الى الحصول على فرصه فرصه عمل يعني تخلص هذه العائله من حاله الفقر. Uh, also, the long-term output of this program is to uh, exit the families from uh, the assistance or the uh, cash transfer they are receiving from the ministry and introducing them into uh, an op an, a work opportunity uh, so that they can uh, be independent. No. Uh, next. Next. Ivan Hadi. الشريحة توضح لنا كل الإجراءات اللي الآن بدينا بيها في عام 2018 استعدادا إلى الوصول إلى نهاية البرنامج في عام 2019. This slide is introducing the next steps until من 2018 2018 يعني حاليا الان احنا في 2018 حددنا تاريخ نهايه البرنامج التجريبي اللي حيكون في اب 2019 2018 نعم اللي على ضوءه في خلال هذه بعد انتهاء حيتم تقييم الاثر وتقييم او يعني المخرجات حتى نقدر بالفعل نتخذ القرار في عمليه التوسع After that, the impact evaluation will be uh, conducted and then uh, the decision for the scale up will be taken. نعم الشريحة اللي وراها Next. هذا تقريبا Main الموضوع التحديات أبرز التحديات هو اللي تواجهنا هو قلة الموارد المالية والبشرية وبالأخص الباحثين الاجتماعيين Main challenge facing uh, the program is the scarcity of the financial and human resources, especially uh, the, uh, uh, you know, we have less social workers working on the ground in the field. And here I stress on uh, the lack of uh, the operational financial uh, resources. والبشرية أقصد أيضا ال ال القدرات أو 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 مؤهلات العاملين. And as for the human resources, I stress on the fact that uh, we lack uh, uh, proper uh, staff or has the, uh, the 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 capacity to perform uh, the work in the field. أما الباحثين الاجتماعيين فالموجودين حاليا الذين لا يقل عددهم عن 1250 باحث. As for the social workers, we currently have 1250 social workers. يعملون بتخصص ولكن بحاجة إلى رفع قدرات. 
uh, they work uh, they work in the field and they support uh, the programs uh, within the social protection commission but their capacity needs to be enhanced ايضا التحدي الثاني هو ضعف البناء التحتيه Uh, also, the uh, other challenge we are facing is the weakness of the Social Protection Commission infrastructure. ولدينا برنامج مع البنك الدولي من خلال قرض قرض البنك الدولي اللي ح يكون الدعم المهم في إنهاء مشكلة البنية التحتية وأيضا. Uh, 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 our partnership with the with the World Bank and the loan from the World Bank will be able to uh, uh, solve the challenge. Uh, and the third the the number of logistics. In sha Allah, it will be able to solve the So the loan from the World Bank will be able to. Uh, uh, manage uh, the two uh, the two remaining challenges which is the weakness and the structure in, in parallel also there there is a current reform بعدين to عم, the law بعدين أصبحت لدينا رؤية على تعديل مواد القانون. So since the implementation of uh, since the implementation of this law, law number 11 for 2014, for three years since 2015, we have uh, the vision uh, or we have the uh, uh, the right approaches uh, to uh, reform uh, the current law, and this process is ongoing. التوجهاتنا المسل okay okay next. The future directions. Yeah. The future direction is the future direction. The future direction is the future direction. The future direction is Uh, so after uh, the implementation during the past three years, uh, uh, the f our future directions, our future direction concerning the application of the law is the, uh, perfect, the perfect application or practice of the law uh, through the uh, through sustaining the infrastructure of the social protection. وأكثر الفقرات في هذا الصفحة هو كلها مذكورة في المشروع الجديد اللي أشرت إلى بالتعاون مع أو من خلال الدعم الفني مع البنك الدولي. All these future directions, all the future directions mentioned in this slide, uh, included within the technical support uh, uh, within the 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 future uh, program uh, with the World Bank and UNICEF, uh, including the technical support. ويبقى الموضوع الأهم هو توفر إرادة حكومية من خلال ليضمن الإرادة الحكومية من العليا تضمن تحفيز الجهات ذات العلاقة أو الشريكة في تنفيذ هذا البرنامج اللي هو الدفعات النقدية المشروع. The most important factor in the implementation of this, uh, um, of, the, all, of all the future directions of the Social Protection uh, Commission is the government will, uh, the highest uh, part in the government, their will to, uh, uh, to secure uh, mm -hmm. the cooperation with the right sides or right parties or right uh, partners. Mm -hmm. ويبقى هذه الإرادة هذه الإرادة الحكومية أتمنى أن تكون أولى أو من أولى أولوياتها هو إنهاء إنهاء توفير أو توزيع الموارد الشامل هناك توزيع للشامل للموارد في حين المطلوب أن يكون توزيع المبالغ للأسر 
المستهدفة أو اللي هي مع خط الفقر. Uh, and uh, this will include uh, يعني prioritizing. Uh, no. uh, and this includes prioritizing, uh, uh, you know, the uh, cash transfers or uh, the assistance or aid to the most vulnerable and most advantaged. Yeah. Well, well, انه خدماتنا تصل الى او تصل من خلال محطات استقبال في جميع الاقضيه بالعراق اللي عددها ما يقارب 130 قضاء and uh, the most important uh, uh... The most important step in yeah. our uh, future directions is the so and the most important uh, point in our future directions are the decentralized delivery of services and this includes the activation of the subcommittees in all 130 districts in Iraq yeah. and, uh, and وصولا طبعا وصولا الى الهدف الاكبر واللي مشار الى بالقانون هو ضمان المساواه بين الجنسين في كافه البرامج and also ensuring gender equality in the implementation of all of the programs ويبقى طموحنا الاكبر والاهم هو تعزيز او تقويه الاستهداف نحن نريد أن يكون الاستهداف فعالا من خلال من خلال سجل وطني موحد أو سجل موحد يتضمن كافة كافة الخدمات الاجتماعية. And our greatest ambition and the most important ambition is uh, to uh, enhance uh, the eligibility uh, uh, criteria and the standards so that we can uh, arrive to a national registry, a unified national registry that will include all the services and include the uh, uh, related beneficiaries the most disadvantaged and vulnerable in society لمنع لمنع تكرار تقديم الخدمه بين المؤسسات المختلفه uh, يعني so, يعني so that we don't so that services تكرار. services are not replicated in more than one uh, institution governmental institution نحن نريد ان نرى uh, الاسر الفقيره تشعر بالسعادة من خلال تقديم دعم نقديا وخدماتيا. We want the poor households to feel that the government is taking care of them by providing cash and also providing services. من خلال توفير السكن المناسب. Through providing appropriate housing. والخدمة الصحية. And health service. التي تؤمن جيلا يستطيع الدراسة والعمل بدون الحاجة إلى أي مساعدة أخرى. Which will build a generation that can. أو بدون الحاجة إلى مساعدة الآخرين. Which will bring a generation who can study and can work and can live in dignity without the need for charity from anyone. ووجدنا ذلك من خلال البيئة التجريبية. الوجوه الأطفال المشمولين بهذا البرنامج الوجوه السعيدة والتي تشعر بالفرحة وقرب والأمان الفرحة والأمان بقرب المؤسسة من من هذه الأسر أو من أسر And we have, felt, we have felt this uh, through the uh, smiling faces of the children who participated in the pilot, uh, and they were very happy and they were feeling uh, secure uh, when uh, they were included in this program, and also the happiness and the optimism of their parents. Yeah. إلى أنه التعديلات في القانون 
بعد أن تكمل سوف تؤدي إلى نقلة نوعية في عمل الحماية الاجتماعية في العراق. I hope I did not take long uh, in my speech or in, in my presentation, uh, but uh, I just want to mention that the reforms in the new in the law will be uh, accomplishing a huge difference in providing social services in uh, this country. من خلال القنوات المشاركة مع المواطنين. Also we are building a very strong complaint system, opening several channels of participation with the beneficiaries. ولأول مرة بدأنا بعمل من خلال البرنامج التشريبي بنظام الرسائل بين من خلال بين المؤسسة. والأسر المشمولة بالCCT. And for the first time in Iraq, we have started working. One of the channels we have opened with beneficiaries is communicating using short messages, SMSs. وهدفنا الأكبر هو حوكمة مؤسسة الحماية الاجتماعية بكل جوانب. حوكمة يعني يعني كل شيء يصير كل شيء مؤتمت حوكمة شلون تسمى حماية اجتماعية بكل تفاصيل. نعم. So and and our priority or our main objective of the whole program is to make everything digitalized, electronic, and we get rid of the paperwork and the long procedures. شكرا جزيلا على تحملكم هذا ال أو هذه الإطالة في الحديث. Thank you very much, and thank you for bearing us as the presentation was taking maybe longer than anticipated. Thank you very much, Mr. Jamal, and thank you to Khulud for the excellent translation. We've been receiving some questions and comments from all of you listening over the last hour or so, and I have several that I can share back with the panelists. And I'm going to be asking people for, for their responses from the panel uh, and some answers. We, we have a few minutes remaining. I think we can, we booked in for a full two hours if necessary. I don't think we're going to take that much time. But I think if we allocate at least the next 15 minutes to a discussion to answer some of these excellent questions that have come through through the chat function. I want to start by going back to the overarching study that Anna Carolina and Charlotte presented and ask a question that was posed by Arthur Van Diesen in the regional MENA office about how this region compares to others in terms of legal provisions for social protection. So Anna Carolina or Charlotte, you looked at the, the MENA region's provisions for legislation or social protection, but do you have an impression on how MENA compares to other regions and are there similar studies for other regions as well? Let's just start with that overarching question first, please, to Anna and Charlotte. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, well, we didn't find any like a similar uh, study that looks at a, a region as a whole. Um, and in general, there is um, actually not that much uh, research conducted on this area of social protection. You know, there's a lot on. Uh, policy evaluation on designs, but this aspect of legal frameworks for social protection programs um, seems to be yeah, less covered in, in research in general. Um, we, we do know that, for example, the ILO social protection report um, does provide an overview of programs, of cash transfer programs, family and child allowances um, that are anchored in uh, national legislation. And there we do see that the MENA region is, um, well, there's not, there are not a lot of countries that um, are listed there with a family and child allowance that is anchored in uh, national legislation. So fewer than in other regions. Um, however, I think there it's important uh, to also keep in mind that the definition of what, what, is, what are the criteria for saying, okay, a program is anchored in national legislation um, what are the criteria used there? So sometimes this underrepresentation could also be due to a definition of uh, legal frameworks. And as we explained in our study, we used a rather broader definition. Um, 
say I, I would say it's a bit difficult to compare to other regions because um, there are a few uh, studies that that do look at other regions in in the way that we did. But um, if we look at ILO, for example, ILO's work there, we see that the MENA region is um, well rather underrepresented, I would say. Um, yeah, I hope this answers the question. Uh, I think there's some more, Sarah. Maybe back okay. to you. Yes, I, I want to ask a question now that was posed by a couple of people, including Verena Damaro uh, and also Charlotte, yourself in, in IPC. You are asking about the inclusion of refugees. So I would, would like to pose a question to both our colleagues in IPC and also to Mr. Jamal for the case specifically in Iraq. For your study in the IPC, I presume that you were not looking at any legal arrangements that were in place for refugee populations, or were there any countries in the region that were an exception to that? And then following on from that point, the same question to Mr. Jamal. Charlotte was asking, we have heard that there are discussions going on in relation to including refugees as an eligible group for receiving the cash transfer. Could you elaborate on this? So questions about whether refugees are included in any legal framework for Charlotte and Anna, and then whether this applies uh, in Iraq for Mr. Jamal. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you, Verena, for the question. Uh, I know it was also um, you asked the question uh, in relation to the Jordan situation. Uh, so, from our analysis, yeah, uh, most programs in the region actually they don't cover uh, refugees. Programs are very much focused on nationals. Uh, this is even the case, for example, in the Gulf countries, in where most of the population is composed by internationals uh, because of economic migration. It's also a relevant aspect, so just not for refugees, but also for non-nationals and uh, people, uh, people on the move and children on the move as well. Uh, we could map some, uh, some uh, exceptions. Uh, one of them is uh, the case for Iraq, and I hope that Mr. Jamal will answer um, yeah, better than, uh, than I would do. Uh, but basically, it's also in place, we know that in Jordan, the national, uh, the civil insurance, uh, the, the health insurance uh, system available for citizens was once open for refugees. Uh, but uh, we, know, uh, we also know from the, the reviewing the literature that it's now not available anymore. Uh, and of course, like we understand like, all the challenges related to that. Uh, but we also know that even before the, the Syrian crisis, the system was the, C, the CIP was uh, open for Palestinians, uh, sorry, ex Gazans uh, children from under the age of six. So this could even be considered an example of how to, yeah, that's of refugees included in the national legislation. But as a whole, as they were just very few and cultural, uh, I think we could also bring the example of the Lebanon crisis response plan. It's not uh, a legal, uh, it's not a legal uh, text, but it's rather a, a policy document. But formulated by the government of Lebanon and international organization, those predict. Uh, a social safety net strategy for the countries and also recognize the need of refugees but also highlighting that efforts from government and international uh, organizations should work together to address the need of those groups. So yeah, I think that countries are um, in the process of addressing the issue. Uh, this is not reflected in legal frameworks uh, and at least not yet. But you see the efforts, uh, especially when you look at those strategy documents. And I think, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's okay. something that countries should do alone. Thank you. And Mr. Jamal, is the, the likelihood of refugees to become included in Iraq's cash transfer program?
أه. لا اللاجئين غير الدول احنا بالقانون كاتبين انه من حق المواطنين الذين يعني يقيمون في العراق بشكل اصولي وان يحصلوا على الاعانه الذين يقيمون في العراق بشكل اصولي والتعامل بالمثل يعني في حاله وجود مواطن عراقي واتفاقيه في الدوله الاخرى يعني يحصل على الاعانه فاحنا ايضا نقدم له الاعانه. The current law states that uh, uh, residents or uh, migrants or uh, people from other countries who are uh, properly or legally uh, residents of Iraq from other nationalities than Iraqis, uh, it is stated in the law that they receive equal opportunities with Iraqis uh, people. So they are included in the social protection uh, system uh, or benefits. Yeah. And this is only related, I mean, currently the refugees are not covered in uh, the Iraqi law. الذين يعيشون المقيمين من عام 2000 1948 هم مشمولين حاليا عندنا بالاعانه. especially for the Palestinian who lives in Iraq since 1948 they are included in the benefits and they are actually receiving benefits uh, uh, and this one this is one of the equalities that uh, the social protection uh, law in Iraq has uh, given uh, as opportunities for other nationalities in Iraq. Thank you very much. I want to continue with a couple of questions to Mr. Jamal because there were several questions from participants about financing and costing both yes. of the so Social protection law or a social protection program. Juan Besta in the regional office asked whether the social protection law had been fully costed uh, and the financing implications had been fully calculated. Um, and there was also a question from Ana Manchado at IPC about whether the law itself regulates the financing of social protection programs. And is there a view to shift? from financing coming from partners to greater financing from the government. So there were quite a few questions there about financing. So was the social protection law fully costed? Does the law itself regulate financing for social protection programs? And is there a move to further support social protection programs from national budgets? Uh, the three, they don't know uh, uh, لمن ان uh, لمن تشرع القانون هل كانت ويا ميزانيه مرفقه او كانت انه مع المستويات اللي كانت بيها وايضا uh, هل اكو uh, uh, شنو هي المصادر اللي خصصت لهذا القانون هاي التفاصيل الباقيه بالضبط احنا بالقانون ايضا من شرعنا خلينا يراد يعني إنشاء صندوق إنشاءه. So when actually I'm asking about uh, the fund that will provide revenues for uh, the law. حاليا واحدة من أهم الإيرادات وتمثل يعني الحصة الأكبر هو من ميزانية الدولة. One of the most important revenues for the law is from the government budget. وهناك أيضا إيرادات أخرى باستقطاع مبلغ بسيط. حاليا مبلغ بسيط جدا من الموظفين وايضا من الاستثمار جزء من الاستثمار وجزء من اقصد ارباح يعني ارباح الشركات السياحه ارباح السياحه وايضا ارباح الشركات النفطيه يعني ال الحكومية المقصود نعم. نعم. وأيضا بعض النقاط هو بس قانون مفتوح بأن نضيف نضيف مبالغ أو نقترح مبالغ من جهات أخرى نعم. 
Now, so the law, uh, in addition to the budget, uh, to the main revenue, which is from the uh, government budget, there are other revenues that can be generated and can uh, can uh, 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 contribute uh, to the accomplishment of the law is uh, the deductions from uh, employees, from government employees, also investment or the profits from private sector companies, also uh, profits from uh, the uh, tourist uh, sector in Iraq uh, and also uh, profits from oil companies and other uh, parties or other sites like uh, uh, the, you know, any other uh, contributions that can be uh, received or uh, deducted uh, from uh, several uh, private or public uh, parties or sites. Or organizations. يعني يبقى هدفنا إنه كل ما نعزز من الاستهداف وتحقيق العدالة العدالة في توزيع الموارد إلى مستحقيها سنضمن سنضمن الحصول على تبرعات وإيرادات كافية للصندوق. And as long as we enhance the targeting mechanisms for the most vulnerable and most um, advantaged uh, beneficiaries, and also we achieve equality in distributing the resources among those beneficiaries, we will manage to get uh, enough revenues for the fund. خاصة مع وجود عدد معين من المتطفلين. على أموال الحماية الاجتماعية ب ب ب من خلال ثقافة يمتلكونها خلال هذه الفترة الماضية نحن نريد حصتنا من النفط أو أنه يعني لدينا حق مشروع في الحصول على أموال من الدولة. Also so uh, currently we are uh, suffering from uh, having uh, uh, a lot of people who are not eligible or uh, so many beneficiaries who are not uh, eligible to receive those benefits uh, who has this mentality of uh, they should be receiving uh, their share of the oil uh, from the government or they have the right to have a salary from the government uh, being an Iraqi. بعد ولا انسى الجميع هناك فتره ماضيه طويله يشعرون بها بالمظلوميه وواحده من من هذه الانعكاسات كما اشرت بان لديهم الحق في الحصول على المبالغ من الدوله. So they think that they are eligible, uh, although they are not uh, achieving the criteria or the standards for eligibility, the requirements for uh, eligibility, but they have uh, the thinking of uh, being uh, uh, eligible to receive those money from or the benefits from the government. <laughs> مثيرة أو زيادة آلية التواصل الجي تغيير هذه الفكرة. Therefore, we are obliged to create external and internal channels with beneficiaries so that we can target beneficiaries. لدينا التعامل أو الشراكة مع البنك الدولي في الإعداد دورات مكثفة. في التغيير أو تغيير السلوكيات النفسية التي يعني ابتلى بها المجتمع العراقي بفترة كبيرة من عدم الثقة والمشاكل الداخلية. We are aiming to change the mentality of uh, those people and the way uh, they are thinking through uh, several behavioral uh, change uh, uh, messages and uh, acts uh, so that we can uh, get uh, the right people to be included in, uh, in, in the programs for the longer term, of course. Excellent. Thank you very much. I think we're going to take a couple more questions before we conclude. I want to go back to one question asked by Anton. York at Esqua, who was asking of Anna Carolina and Charlotte in relation to their study. Clearly, legal provisions for social protection are very important. 
Um, but he was also wondering whether you consider that there could be a risk that having a legal framework in place or a legal provision for a social protection program could possibly make those programs more flexible and less able to adapt in changing. It's useful to get your, your thoughts on that. And then before you answer that, the question we would also like to ask to Mr. Jamal before we conclude, there have been several questions asking about the quality of the cash transfer programs in Iraq and whether they apply to all children, including those who live perhaps with disabilities or those who live in areas where schools are not adequately provided or to a high enough level of quality. So let's conclude by those two questions. We'll go back to Anna, Carolina, and Charlotte on that question about possible inflexibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Anton, for this um, really important question, which I think um, is particularly relevant for, for the MENA region um, in, in terms of scaling up uh, social protection programs that are already in place uh, in emergencies. Um, so, um, well, first, we, we did not find any evidence that a legal framework would act as a, bar as a barrier, at least yet. Yeah, we, we did not find this. I think this is um, maybe a first important uh, finding. Um, but what we do see that even if there's a legal framework in place, it does, mean, it does not mean that it, can, it cannot be adapted. So, for example, in, in Jordan, the National Aid Fund, um, in its first law, already foresaw that um, the eligibility groups can be defined by um, complementary and additional um, regulations, and this was actually the case, and it's been uh, continuously updated. So I think this um, can also be a way of uh, of adapting um, to to changing circumstances. But um, this actually it's a very good question because it brings me to another study that we at, at the IPC together with UNICEF Minaro are developing on um, shock responsive uh, social protection systems. Um, and uh, this, uh, as I mentioned earlier, will be um, published until the end of the year. And in this study, we also look at um, this question a bit in terms of legal frameworks for um, more shock responsive social protection systems. And um, as I already mentioned, the, the study, I think um, I'd like also to, to take the the opportunity before we before we end to um, to invite all participants to the online community. Um, I believe there's a link on the first slide of the presentation or the second slide. Uh, the online community is open to everyone uh, who would like to discuss anything related to social protection in the MENA region. Um, it's also a space to to share um, recent research from different organizations, different backgrounds. And yeah, I'd just like to to invite you all. And I think I will hand over to Mr. Jamal for the for the last question. Thank you. Mr. Jamal and Khulud, would you like to go ahead and ask this very last question about conditionality and how it relates to children in difficult circumstances? Okay. So okay. yeah, uh, I will answer uh, on behalf of Mr. Jamal. Uh, the uh, children at the moment, the pilot program. Is not targeting all children. It's uh, it's a pilot and uh, the is. So the target uh, age uh, groups uh, in this pilot is from, uh, uh, from, uh, yeah. uh, from uh, the day of birth uh, of the child till six. years of age, uh, the program is supporting them with health services with uh, uh, age groups from nine years old till uh, 15 years old. هذه مجرد يعني للدراسة نحن نحن نفكر بدعم الطلاب من من الأو من الأول الابتدائي إلى حين إكمال الإعدادية الدراسة الإعدادية. Our our hope and our objective is to support all children for all different school ages, but because this pilot is limited and the financial resources also limited, that is why we have put an age group at target.
market for uh, the age uh, in, in the price. But in the future, the scale up of first prime uh, high school. For us, I mean, uh, it is a chance to work for the children or for the children وإعطائهم الأولوية لغرض خروجهم من نظام الدفعات النقدية. Also to provide a work. Opportunities for the members of this program. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for those responses to all the panelists. Thank you in particular to all of you, the participants, for staying with us throughout the webinar. Apologies if you had any technical difficulties. Uh, I think the IPC document, which will be available shortly, gave us a view of, of these legislative systems and provisions that are an excellent example of what can be done both on programming and on the legal side. So thank you again to Anna Carolina Machado, to Charlotte Bilo, to Mr. Jamal Khaib, and of course to Khulud, who is supporting the translation. Uh, and thank you all very much. Please note that the recordings and the presentation from the webinar will shortly be, be made available to all of you and through the website. And once again, you're invited to join this online community on social protection in MENA at socialprotection.org. So I just have to wish you a very good day and a good evening and hope to speak with you all again soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you very much.